Ciao and welcome to my review of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Well, that was a bit uneventful, wasn't it? A cracking race from start to finish with plenty of drama and your top three of Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton and Lando Norris, the two Brits on the podium and a pretty uh, eventful uh, race for all uh, three uh, drivers uh, just 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 behind me um but yeah cracking race from start to finish in very challenging and tricky conditions for, for all the drivers um but i have to start with red bull and max verstappen fantastic race uh, from the dutchman um wasn't obviously would have been disappointed um to only manage third in qualifying on saturday but boy did max make a fantastic start um on on sunday on, on race day um able to uh really um fantastic start off the line and uh, managed to get by uh his team at checker perez and also lewis hamilton as well and really once he was out in front he looked in total control total demand there was he did have a little wobble um just after just after the restart um after, after the red flag after the incident between valtteri bottas and george russell which will which i'll come on to talk about um but yeah other than that little wobble um you have to say uh, max did a fantastic job and you know like i say from the start to finish he was pretty dominant and didn't really look troubled other than having that that wobble so yeah great performance from max in very tough conditions and you have to say he thoroughly deserved uh, to, to win on on sunday so great win for max and also for red bull um and yeah it's it's the battle we want to see isn't it between lewis and uh, and max uh, arguably two of the, two of the standout and best drivers in formula one um right now in the best cars you have to say but um yeah whilst there was joy on one side of the red bull garage not so much on the other side um although saturday after saturday promised so much more for checo perez um qualifying on the front row uh, for the first ever time in his formula one career and out qualifying max as well and you know i thought i genuinely thought checo was going to make make the most of it um but unfortunately to be fair he didn't get off to a bad start um yes he got by um, um Verstappen got by um but apart from that actually Checo didn't make a bad start um but just those little mistakes where he unfortunately was not through you know, through his own fault really um but at the same time look you know it's only his second race at Red Bull and you know he he needs time and he, and he said to himself he said he said that he needs at least four or five races to get used to the Red Bull so you know it's not about how you start the season it's where you end up at the end of the season and it's a long season we're all going to make mistakes and um yeah you know like, I still think I still think Checo is going to have a good season this year I've genuinely got a good feeling about Checo I think he'll have a good season and the thing is though whilst things didn't go to plan on race day for, for Sergio on Saturday he proved that actually he can out muscle uh, max he can beat him in qualifying so he can do it just needs to just needs to now do it do it more often and just and just perfect um perfect the uh race day uh performance but the thing the thing is though you very very rarely you see um sergio make mistakes and it, it was it was just one of those days where where he made mistakes but look you know all drivers make mistakes and um even the, even the very best which which i'm gonna which are who i'm which I'm going to come on to soon. Um, but yeah, I don't think Checo should be um, too hard on himself because there's still a long way to go this season. And I can certainly see him bouncing back from um, from disappointment um, in in Imola uh, at the weekend. So uh, yeah, great Saturday for Checo. Didn't quite work out on Sunday, but you know, it's a long season. So shouldn't, Checo shouldn't be too hard on himself. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, whether he can uh, bounce back pretty quickly in the next Grand Prix at Portugal, so you know, and the thing, and the thing is though, it was a weekend where the number two uh, drivers at uh, at the top two teams, Red Bull and Mercedes, didn't have the best of days. So coming on to talk about Mercedes, uh, fair to say Lewis Hamilton, um, an eventful uh, race for 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 the Brit and the seven-time world champion. So 
got uh, got overtaken by um, by Max at, at the start of the race, and um, I've got no doubt after going over the over the hump over the bump, um, he would have no doubt uh, suffered some damage un underneath the underneath the car, and then um, during during the mid part of the race, we saw him then um, going going to the barrier, um, just 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 a light kiss at the barrier, but that was enough um, for him to actually then have to have to then really make his way through the field. Yes, you could argue that the um, that the restart, having the race restarted, the red flag came out. Um, I'm not saying at the right time for Lewis, but it came out at, um, yeah, a really convenient time, you could argue, um, for Lewis. I can't get my words out, uh, to ignore that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Lewis, I think when, he, when the restart took place, he was down in ninth, so really he he had it all to do after after his uncharacteristic mistake but you know what you got to give him credit you know you got to give lewis credit yes he has got the best car but at this but at the same time you know you you, you had to do the overtakes he had to, he had to do it and, and and he did that and you know to to claw him claw his way back from ninth to finish second um great result great performance from from lewis and um who knows you know that result could you know could make the difference between whether he becomes world champion or not, world champion or not again, you know, come coming in the season. So, but yeah, great performance from Lewis, and um, you know, he he whilst it wasn't a perfect uh, race day uh, for Lewis, obviously he didn't win the race, but a lot of positives that he can take um, from the way he performed and was able to make his way back up to uh, second place. So yeah, good race from from Lewis, and um, whilst it was a uh, a good recovery. Um, from from Lewis Hamilton, the other side of Mercedes garage spoke about Red Bull. No one side of the garage being you know being overjoyed, and the other not so much. Exactly the same at Mercedes. And on Friday, you have to say Valtteri had had the measure of Lewis. Now Valtteri was um, believe I believe he was quickest in both first and second pre practice. So he would have no doubt been confident going into Saturday. But after qualifying on on Saturday, really then from then that point on it's we've really been a, a weekend to forget uh for for Valtteri um it's a, a tough weekend um but as I've said about Checo you know with, with Valtteri you know it's not about how you start the scene it's where you end up at the at the end so you know, I think look you know Valtteri it was just one of those weekends where you know things just didn't just didn't go for him from from qualifying and and you get that as a driver you know not every weekend is going to be playing sailing not every weekend is going to be perfect it's just one of those weekends for Valtteri but I've got no doubt that he will he will bounce back um as for my take on the incident between himself and George Russell um look we we know there were it was tricky and challenging conditions and, and I and I certainly wouldn't like to drive drive on, on on track like that for sure so I wouldn't like to I don't I don't envy them at all um but you know what I would say is that obviously Valdry had the um, inside inside line. He just made a slight right um, movement, which might have irked um, George Russell. But then again, I have to say, just just by looking at the camera uh, views and shots that I that I could see, um, I still feel that Russell had enough space where he could have actually gone by or got past um, Bottas. Got a great toe, actually. Russell got a really good toe um, as he was trying to attempt to uh, get by uh, Valtteri um, but I think George uh, he just put a dip the car on onto onto the grass which meant which meant both um, him and uh, Bottas collided so I think it's a difficult one I think you know Valtteri didn't intentionally um, look to take out uh, Russell um, it's just a little uh, movement to the right which as I say may well have irked um russell which meant then that you know that unnerved uh unnerved george so um yeah it's i think you know it's, it's the second year in a trot now where george has been in a in a good position to to score points and you now he's well been been the car shall we say so um yeah so he just needs to just needs to learn from those mistakes um but i've, I've got no doubt that george will score points for Williams this year, I believe he he can do it. He will do it. Um, it's just, it's just a case of when, and uh, not not if. And the thing and the thing is though with Williams as well, they 
qualifying actually went pretty well for Williams, wasn't too bad. So managed to get both cars uh, into into Q2, and George wasn't too far away from making it into Q3 as as well. So, but yeah, Sunday you could argue was a missed opportunity for, for Williams um to 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 score some points. Um, but it but it is what it is, and uh, they'll be looking to uh, bounce back uh, in the in the next race at uh, Portugal. A weekend of what might have been for for Williams for both for both Nicholas Latifi and also uh, for for George Russell as as well. Um, but we we'll talk about the highs. Um, Lando Norris finishing third uh, on for McLaren and another podium for the Brit. And whilst he was gutted and disappointed um, for his final lap in uh, in Q3, uh, having been deleted due to him having exceeded track limits. Um, cracking race from Lando and he throughout the whole weekend he looked he looked very quick and um, yeah absolutely fantastic job from Lando and you now he he continues to impress me um, and I believe this is his third season third season in Formula One and he just seems to be getting better and better and I think McLaren I think if that if you know the week result at Imola is that if that's a sign of things to come for the rest of the season and I think McLaren could be in for a very exciting season this year um but yeah absolutely fantastic job from Lando Norris wasn't quite able to um hold off Lewis to to take second but even so finishing third and finishing on the podium as well um yeah great performance from Lando and once again um outshoning his teammate Daniel Ricciardo the Aussie really in a, in a race of his own, really, um, didn't really, um, look, whilst we say that, you know, Ricardo, even though he's been outshone by his teammate, he still picked up points, and, you know, I think, look, going into a new team is going to take time, and it's going to take time to settle, and we've, we've only had two races, so, you know, the fact that Daniel, yes, he's been beaten by his teammate, you could argue that you could kind of expect it that, but when we get towards, say, the mid part of the season, you you would expect, or I'm sure Daniel will be expecting to be much closer to to challenging his uh, his teammate. But uh, but even so, um, like I say, Daniel's still picking up the points, and every and every point matters, particularly in the constructors' battle, and particularly how Ferrari have started this season, which I'm going to come on to talk about soon. Um, but yeah, another solid weekend for McLaren, um, another podium for. Lando Norris, and uh, I made a prediction at the start of the season, the fact that McLaren will win a race this year, and by the way things are going at the moment, the progress that McLaren have made, and just by looking at the opening two races, I, I really think McLaren could do it this year, and I genuinely think that we could see uh, McLaren back on the top step of the podium, but yeah, another good weekend, and another solid uh, performance on both um, Lando Norris and Dan Ricciardo. So I just mentioned about Ferrari. Um, so Charles Leclerc in fourth and Carlos Sainz in fifth. And yes, it w yes, they both drivers did make mistakes um, throughout the race, but they were able to make the way up to fourth and fifth. And um, yeah, another good weekend for for Ferrari and uh, a solid weekend like like McLaren. Um, another solid weekend for Ferrari. So Charles similar to uh, Lando, wasn't quite able to hold off the charge from Lewis um, at, at the end and um, yeah I don't think Ferrari at this stage are at that Mercedes uh, Red Bull level but tell you what if they carry on um, performing as they are and they keep getting the results as they are right now then they're going to be in with a great shot of at least finishing third in the constructors and once again, Charles driving the wheels off that Ferrari, and even last season, even the difficult season that they had, Charles did a fantastic job. And in a way, you could argue he's continued where he's left off uh, from from last year. And another good start to the season for for Charles and for Carlos as well. Uh, another a solid. Uh, drive from the Spaniard. Yes, he did make one or two mistakes during the race, but you know, we saw so many drivers make mistakes, and it and it was again, as I and I'll keep saying again, very challenging and tricky conditions. But you now to come home, uh, fourth and fifth Ferrari, 
look, obviously they obviously they they won't be winning races, but you know, fourth and fifth, considering the season that they had last season, not a bad result at all for Ferrari, and at least they've got a solid platform to build on based on the results that they've had uh, from the opening two races of the season. So a lot of positives that Ferrari, both Charles and also Carlos, can take uh, from the weekend. At, um, at Imola. Um, so I mentioned about Daniel Ricciardo finishing sixth. Um, one of my star drivers, I have to say, from the weekend is is Lance Stroll. Um, we know how good he is in in the challenging and tricky conditions and in the wet conditions as well. And Lance once again proved that, and he broke a solid race. You now made it into Q3. Okay, he had a couple of times uh, deleted uh, in qualifying, which meant that he only started the race from from tenth. But even so. Um, Solid, solid race from from Lance and uh, good, uh, good, a good start. You no know, two points finishes now this season for for the Canadian and um, yeah, a, a good solid drive from Lance and one of those unsung heroes from from Sunday. And I think sometimes, I think sometimes Lance doesn't des- doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Um, and you know, last season now, I think you know he again like last season now. I don't think he got the credit that he deserves but um yeah a good start to the season for um lance i'm sure aston martin will definitely be expecting more as the as the season progresses but it's been a not a bad start at all for lance and um, yeah he can definitely hold his head high after the way he was able to perform um in qualifying but also on race day as well kept his nose clean um I didn't see him make many mistakes at all. Um, so I think he was one of those drivers, one only one of the few drives actually that I didn't see uh, make any mistakes. But yeah, really good drive from Lance and um, a solid, solid drive from the Canadian. So Pierre Gasly came home in eighth. Um, again, good points for Alpha Tauri. Um, didn't get off to the best of starts, and I know Gasly chose to go and start the race on the full wet tyres and. It looked the wrong decision at, at at one point, but you know he was able to. Once he got rid of those tyres, then he was able to make his way through the field. And um, yeah, you know some good points for AlphaTauri. Had a great qualifying um, on uh, on on Saturday, uh, ending uh, putting the car in P five. But as I say, just starting on those four wet tyres. I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, so perhaps they should have started on the intermediates. And had they done that. Who knows where they would have ended up, but um, yeah, another good drive from Pierre Gasly. We've come to expect that now, don't we? Now that's the standard. Now he's he's set himself some really high standards now, and um, yeah, good performance from Pierre Gasly and his first points of the season as well, and also first points of the season for Kimi Raikkonen. Um, still showing that he's got it, um, even though he's into his forties uh, forties now. Um, but yeah, great drive from Kimi Raikkonen. A couple of points for uh, him and also the team as well. So their first points of uh, the season. And I have to say, Alfa Romeo have um, have made some significant progress. You know, they were, you could argue, last season they were the team just above uh, Williams and Haas, and there was a lot of struggle last year. But so far this year, you have to say that. They're right, at, right in the battle with, with midfield now with the likes of Aston Martin and Alpine. And um, you know, Kimi, you no, know, yes, he again, you no, know, he made one or two mistakes uh, during during the race, but even so, a couple of points uh, for him and the team. And um, a shame, a shame that Antonio Giovinazzi had issues um, as well, because without those issues, um, I think he would have been in contention to challenge for some points as, as well but even so I think from the start that Alfa Romeo have made this season I think there are certainly some positives that they can that they can take going into uh, the remainder of the of the season so there's a long way to go but even so two two races down and uh, not a not a bad start for Alfa Romeo and definitely some positives that they can that they can take and then also uh, first points of the season for Esteban Ocon and also Alpine as well um look you know it's not been a spectacular start of the season for Alpine but I expect them to get better as the season goes on and um you know Esteban Ocon beating his more experienced teammate in Fernando Alonso I think will 
do his confidence uh, the world of good as as well. So um, yeah, good good point for Esteban uh, Ocon. Just wasn't able to quite because I know him. There's quite a close trail at the end of the race between uh, Raikkonen, Ocon, Alonso, and Checo Perez. Uh, but even so, um, Ocon just wasn't quite able to get past Kimi Raikkonen. But um, Alpine's first points, uh, first point of the season, which just leaves um, Williams and Haas as the two pointless uh, teams uh, for for this season. So, uh, yeah, a fantastic race um, to uh, back uh, to what well, back to back cracking races this this um, this year. And if last year's Portuguese Grand Prix was anything to go by, then. I think we'll be in for another great race in, in Portugal and you know, Portuguese Grand Prix can't come sooner enough. So yeah, would love to um, get your feedback and really you talk about Formula One and uh, you can do so by messaging me. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Baggies20 and I'm also on Instagram Manish Patel89. So Hope you all enjoyed the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix and I will catch up with you all um, when I do my preview for the Portuguese Grand Prix. Arrivederci everyone.